And uh, another thing, if I may say, that I think hooks together the near-death experience with the UFO uh, experience, whatever its basis may be, is when people come out of these experiences and have worked it through, they come to have a worldview that is very similar to one another and is very similar to what's being talked about all the time at this conference, and that's an ecological worldview. The, the heightening of ecological sensitivity, the increase of concern with the welfare of the planet is one thing that unites these two people, even though they have these very disparate experiences. What they say about what they've learned from these experiences, what the meaning of these experiences for them is that the fate of the earth is in our hands and we better wake up to do something about it very quick. So I see these experiences perhaps being orchestrated by I think this is similar to your view, perhaps a planetary mind, an overmind, a mind at large, mm -hmm. uh, which is in some sense the expression of our deepest yearnings and perhaps our deepest fears that are feeding back these kinds of experiences in the form of kind of archetypal experiences, archetypal images, so as to impress people who might not otherwise be impressed to take the kind of action necessary to correct the, the, the direction in which the earth is heading. So it's a kind of confoundment. It it's, is. Its purpose is to be inexplicable. Exactly. That's exactly how I conclude my book. I say the point of these experiences is to be baffled by them, almost as though they're a kind of a, a koan that we're not meant to solve, but we're meant to kind of chew over until our rational mind cracks and we begin to think in entirely new ways and hopefully act in entirely new ways. So it's a way of keeping us from closure. Exactly. It's kind of a sort of a deconstruction phenomenon, you could even say. The world, it's saying to us, the world is not so simple exactly. as you might choose to suppose. Exactly so.